ESEA League lets you compete against other pre-made teams in weekly officials, which are more competitive than the matches seen in Faceit and in matchmaking games. It is by far Counter-Strike's largest team league. All these teams you're seeing here are only the ones who were competing in last season's European Open Division. The league's multiple divisions bridge the skill gap between matchmaking and pro-level play. Maybe you're just looking for more purpose to the matches you play with your friends. Or maybe you think you have what it takes to go pro. Either way, ESEA League's divisions will provide you with regular matches with and against players of a similar mindset. Your journey into this world could all start with the upcoming ESEA League Season 50. Sign up for this closes on July the 11th, then on July the 15th, the matches begin. During the season you'll be guaranteed at least 14 officials and more should you make it to the playoffs later on in the year, like all these teams in the European Open Division did last season. You can enter your pre-made team into the Open Division today or use the new Looking for Team feature should you need more teammates to fill up your own squad with, or maybe you're looking for a team to join yourself. Check out the link in this video's description to embark upon your journey into ESEA League. To celebrate Season 50, ESEA has partnered with me to create this video, looking into the League's history, present, and how it may shape the Counter-Strike scene heading into the future. It is a very exciting time for Counter-Strike's esports ecosystem. Few other games can match it for the diversity and opportunities that it provides its players. Elsewhere, esports teams often struggle to financially support themselves and to find upcoming events to participate in. With Counter-Strike, however, ESEA's League and its multiple divisions are here to serve as a springboard for talented and motivated individuals and teams, both to have fun in and to provide a regular framework of events and tournaments for them to return to again and again in which to train, compete and even to win prize money in. I just wish that forming a team and entering into a tournament had been so easy and accessible back when I was playing Counter-Strike with friends in 2005 and 2006. The time we wasted trying to find a fifth decent player all those hours spent trawling IRC for a mid-skilled match, or debating over whether to use our server or theirs, where a bigger challenge than the match itself was in trying to get the enemy team to accept the outcome of the match without them resorting to rulebook bashing because of the server setup or because one of our players forgot to record a personal demo. Those were the days. But what we really wanted back then was a clear and defined path to the top, a clear way to see where we were and how far we had yet to travel. We didn't want an easy path, but just one where the challenge was in winning the matches, rather than trying to arrange them in the first place and to deal with admin throughout the ordeal. Of course, as a team we probably weren't good enough to get too far, but it would still have been nice to know that, preferably through a series of challenging and engaging competitive matches. So that's what the ESEA League can offer you. It all starts with the Open Division, which will be suitable for players experienced with CS2's matchmaking and face it games. I mean, there's nothing stopping a team of lower skilled players from participating in it for the fun of it and to get a feel for a more structured, more professional kind of event, but they should prepare themselves to get soundly beaten. But the Open Division is there for you as you get better and no matter how good you become, the ASEA League will continually offer more challenges and opportunities as you go up its divisions. From Open to Intermediate, then to Main, Advanced, the ESL Challenger League and then eventually to the very top with the ESL Pro League or EPL for short. This progression through the divisions is an adventure unto itself and along the way many opportunities will open up to you. Obviously, each division you go up gets harder and more professional, the opponents you face more disciplined and talented and the matches you partake in will attract increasing amounts of attention from streams and from third party sites. By the time you hit the advanced division, pro teams above you will start eyeing you up as the next source of quality talent. By the time you reach the ECL stage, your team will have started to build prestige and the matches you play in will be covered by casters and by websites which will list the standings, and every team you face from now on will be borderline top tier. And eventually, if you become the very best at Counter-Strike, you'll enter the EPL division. Here you'll be participating in multi-week-long lands, covered with world-class content creation, you'll experience all of this in luxury levels of hospitality, and there will be six and seven figure prize pools for the taking. So ESEA League is there to help nurture and support the amateur scene by providing a clear, understandable, but also incredibly challenging route up through the higher and more prestigious tiers of competitive play, without the need for the players involved to worry about getting sponsors or connections within the scene. All your team requires is the raw talent and ability to win the matches you partake in, and to actually enter into the ESEA League in the first place. But where did it all start out from? It was born from the ashes of CGS, which was a very different kind of esports experience. 
CGS, short for Championship Gaming Series, was an extremely lavish kind of event. It poured $50 million into the scene, buying out teams like Complexity and Team 3D, providing its players with massive salaries, and hosting prize pools that were unmatched anywhere else in the esports world at the time. It even brought all of the players to a Playboy Mansion for the draft and broadcast the matches live on TV. However, just because a lot of money was thrown at it, it didn't mean it was good for the esports scene. Players are being rounded up whether they like it or not. CGS prohibited top teams from competing in other esports leagues, which suffocated the rest of the scene, and it ultimately proved destructive to esports by reducing viewership and participation. And then CGS went bankrupt soon after in the 2008 financial crash. This led to a few very challenging years for the esports scene, as the industry's reputation was tarnished from this costly collapse. Potential sponsors were scared off, and many pro players had to give up their esports careers and return to education, or to other forms of work instead. And this is where the ESEA League began, formed by the founder of Team 3D, who made it the goal of the ESEA League to host consistent and reliable community-funded tournaments, which would make it impervious to external factors and to market fluctuations. This would ensure a solid, stable and regular event that teams and players could rely on to get matches, experience and potential prize pools for the winning. The first season took place way back in 2008 with a very modest $1,500 prize pool for its CS 1.6 event, but this soon increased and the tournament opened up to more games and to different kinds of events. Season 2 had a combined prize pool of over $20,000 and by Season 4 it had reached $40,000. Looking at the winning teams at these early events, some names really stand out. Evil Genius is won in several of these early seasons, and from its roster you'll probably recognise the player, nothing. In fact, you'll find many North American pro players making a name for themselves within these early days of the ESEA League. Players such as Sean Gares, Hiko, Adren and Swag. Yep, that's him, right there. More recent pro players such as Elige and Spinks climbed all the way up from ESEA's open divisions all the way until they were competing in EPL at the very top. In fact, Elysia was playing StarCraft in ESEA's league before moving to Counter-Strike, actually jumping games but remaining within ESEA's ecosystem. It's actually really interesting to see how these games and tournaments have evolved over time. Some of the newer players among you may only know Counter-Strike 2, though I suspect many of you started during CSGO's lifetime. But for those of you who were on the scene from before then, you may remember a more complicated time when Counter-Strike's player base was split across different versions of the game, especially 1.6 and Source. For a while, the ESEA League hosted separate events for both of these games, and even supported Team Fortress 2 with its own events for many years. But with Counter-Strike at least, CSGO managed to unite the player bases together, and it catapulted ESEA League's popularity as it rode the wave of the game's growing success. Early on in CSGO's lifetime, it got the matchmaking feature, which helped the game surge in popularity and ESEA League's team numbers doubled soon after. Then, since merging with ESL in 2015 to create the ESL Pro League division, the team numbers have doubled again. In 2022, ESL merged with Faceit, integrating the ESEA League into the Faceit platform, which provided its player base with a more robust anti-cheat and allowed it to host its matches on Faceit's powerful servers. Indeed. ESEA League has come a long way since Season 1's humble beginnings, now providing its amateur Counter-Strike community with four seasons a year, each comprising of many divisions and a combined prize pool for amateur teams of over $800,000 a year. These days, if ranked by prize pool, ESEA on its own would be the 43rd largest esports title in the world, ahead of entire other games such as Modern Warfare 2, Smash Bros Melee and Street Fighter 6. Yet the ESEA League remains true to its origins by still relying on a self-sustaining, subscription-funded model, which lets it operate without the need for external sponsors and investments. It learned from CGS's unsustainable practices by growing in a more gradual and more natural manner, with the size of each new season determined by the popularity of the previous one. Season 49 saw a record 2,600 teams registered for the event, and 855 of these were competing in the North American region alone, and these numbers have determined the structure of the upcoming Season 50. And this time around, if there are over 70 teams taking part in any of these geographical areas, then the ESEA League will host more divisions in those regions for Season 51, and so on. All of this is providing the community with a reliable source of new matches and experiences. And indeed, if your goal is to become the very best at Counter-Strike, then you wouldn't be the first to get there by climbing ESEA's divisions. Over 94% of players who are now in the top 10 teams have previously competed in ESEA's lower divisions first. Team Big is an example of a team whose players all rose to pro level through ESEA League's divisions. 
and who are now all playing together in the prestigious ESL Pro League. But ESEA League isn't just for the extremely competitive, and its regular seasons have spawned a more social side to them as well. The Old Guys Club was a team of streamers containing names like Shroud and Summit 1G, who used the ESEA League more for the streaming possibilities that it provided, using it as an easy way to find matches for them to enjoy themselves in without caring too much whether they'd reached the top or not. We're memeing this whole fucking thing, so if we have to go to Poland, memeing. So for many, the ESEA League has become a regular part of their Counter-Strike experience, and each new season, something to look forward to, and a new story to embark upon. And a new story CS2 is. It would have been easy to see the number of teams in CSS and 1.6 back in the day and to think that would be as big an esports event as the game would ever become. But then CSGO brought unprecedented growth to ESEA League, and that popularity remained throughout the game's 10-year lifespan. And now we see another new surge of growth starting come the Source 2 version of the game. So who knows how big it will become in this new chapter for Counter-Strike. Currently, half of the SEA League players are face at level 10, but Counter-Strike 2 is beginning to attract a more casual side to the open division, for those who want a taste of what a more official feeling structure of event can provide them. Imagine ESEA's Open Division serving as like a Sunday League experience that lets players play together in a tournament where there is more consequence to winning than simply the end screen of a match, and where if you win enough, then there is a prize pool at stake. There's just something more meaningful about this than playing a matchmaking game, and here you'll be participating in a large and evolving event with plenty of exciting and unexpected opportunities along the way. So that's what ESEA League can offer you, to be that next step for all those people who enjoy the game but who have tired of the endless cycle of one-off matches and casual experiences. So if you want to get into something that's more team-focused and to dip your toes into a new world of competition, then sign up to ESEA League Season 50 using the link in this video's description. Have fun!